I'm Caitlin Phillips, and this is The Side Comment. On this episode, Gordon Campbell separates myth from fact surrounding the history of the Norse and their presence on the North American continent. Hello, my name is Gordon Campbell. I'm Emeritus Professor of Renaissance Studies at University of Leicester in England, and I've recently written a book called Norse America, the Story of a Founding Myth. America, as we all know, was discovered by the ancestors of today's Native Americans. If, however, we rephrase the question in terms of the identity of the first Europeans to have reached America, then the Norse become the prime candidates, as long as we distinguish between the North American continent, which the Norse certainly reached, and what is now the United States, which the Norse may or may not have reached. Two sorts of evidence are adduced to support the notion of a Norse presence, literary evidence from sagas and archaeological evidence. There are two sagas, Saga of the Greenlanders and Saga of Eric the Red, together known as the Vinland sagas, that contain accounts of voyages in the late 10th and early 11th centuries to Greenland and the lands to the west. They tell the stories of Eric the Red traveling to Greenland and his son, Life the Lucky, traveling west from Greenland to new lands. These sagas are often treated as if they were logbooks recording actual voyages by named historical individuals. But there's no evidence that these individuals actually existed. There may have been a chieftain called Eric the Red, around whom legends accumulated, and he may have had a son called Life Erikson or Life the Lucky, It's of course possible that these characters did exist and that the sagas preserve shards of memory of real people and events. In other words, Eric and life and their companions exist in the awkward liminal space between fact and fiction. Now let's now turn to the archeological evidence beginning with Greenland. Because Greenland is a semi-autonomous part of Denmark, it's politically associated with Europe but it is geologically part of the North American continent. The Inuit people of Greenland speak the same language as their cousins in Canada, which at the closest point is only about 15 miles away. There was an indigenous population in northern Greenland when the Norse arrived in the south, but there were no indigenous people in the vicinity of the Norse settlements. In their principal settlement area, the Norse built a stone cathedral, two monasteries, 12 parish churches and a number of farm churches. The best preserved of these churches, still standing at its full height, had a loft to accommodate a choir. In short, the Norse were settled in North America centuries before Columbus, who never visited the continent at all, nor envisaged its existence. The Norse traveled in what is now the Canadian High Arctic. Norse artifacts have been found at a number of indigenous sites on Arctic islands. Three sites on Ellesmere Island, for example, have yielded many Norse artifacts datable to the late 13th century. The sheer abundance of artifacts, together with the absence of any Norse structures, would seem to imply either salvage from a shipwreck or a successful attack on a Norse ship. In either case, the artifacts are evidence that the Norse were sailing in the high Arctic in the late 13th century. Further south, there is only one incontestable site. Lanzo Meadows, on the tip of Newfoundland's northern peninsula, was the location of a short-lived Norse settlement early in the 11th century. There is evidence that the site was used for ship repairs, but no evidence of protracted settlements such as a graveyard it seems likely to have been a transit camp, perhaps on the route to a settlement on the North American mainland. No such site has ever been found, but there is intriguing evidence in the form of three butternuts found at Lanso Meadows, a species which has never grown in Newfoundland. The butternuts range includes southern Canada, from the St. Lawrence River Valley in New Brunswick and the river valleys of New England. Neither ocean nor river currents would have brought the butternuts north to Lanso Meadows in northern Newfoundland, so we can clearly infer that the Norse visited at least one of those locations. But which one? One candidate is coastal Maine, where the one genuine Norse artifact in what is now the United States 
was found in 1957. It's an 11th century Norse coin, popularly known as the main penny. It's now in the main state museum in Augusta, but is unaccountably not on display. The site where the coin was found has yielded more than 20,000 Native American artifacts, but no other Norse artifacts. That means that the coin had been traded south, probably from the Arctic, rather than dropped by a visiting Norseman. Further evidence for this view is that the coin was once pierced near the edge, so likely to have been worn as a pendant as a sign of how unique it was. Other artifacts claimed as Norse fall into three broad categories. Some are genuine artifacts that have been planted. A 10th century sword and axe head said to have been found in northern Ontario are genuine artifacts, but it was subsequently demonstrated that they had not been found at the purported find spot and that their discovery was a hoax. Other artifacts are genuine, but are misinterpreted as Norse. The Newport Tower in Rhode Island, for example, was said to have been a medieval Norse church or baptistry, but is in fact a 17th century windmill built by the governor of Rhode Island. The third type of so-called Norse artifacts are those that are completely faked, usually in the form of runic inscriptions. The most famous fabricated inscription is the Kensington Rune Stone, which was found in rural Minnesota in 1898 and has been the subject of hundreds of books and articles. The runic inscription it describes how a party of 30 Norsemen arrived on a journey of exploration in 1362, whereupon 10 members of the expedition were murdered. Even though a Norwegian professor at the University of Minnesota immediately concluded that the rune stone was a spoof, the Scandinavian and wider public rejoiced in the discovery that a group of Nordic warriors had arrived in Minnesota in 1362, long before Columbus discovered America. The letters AVM on the inscription were said to mean Ave Maria or Ave Virgo Maria, and so were quickly welcomed by the Catholic Church. Religious pride was thus added to ethnic pride. The debate about the authenticity of the Kensington Rune Stone has rumbled on up to the present, though it is now a local rather than a national issue. Considering the question of where the Norse may have voyaged and what parts of America they may have arrived in can be a fascinating and wholly harmless topic. But unfortunately, the idea that the Norse discovered America with total regard for the Native Americans who had lived on the continent for millennia before is an all too common belief. Pride in family ancestry is understandable. But if it becomes pride in ethnicity, it can take on unsavory overtones, especially if such sentiment is transformed into ethnic superiority. America, like Britain, still has unresolved racial inequalities, and we must all guard against the use of imagined history to support narratives of racial entitlement. In the case of Norse history on the North American continent, it is imperative to distinguish between the indisputable facts and the many other more uncertain theories.